Hello and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. I'm Daryl Griffiths and this is my weekly 180 where I spend 180 seconds on the latest techie news that impacts the world of SAP. At the end, I'll pick my favorite to review in a little more detail in the cubicle. In my SAP Techie News this week, a couple of items from the SAP News Center. The first is a fantastic journey through the history of the SAP IDES. For those not aware, IDES is slash was the demonstration system, or more precisely, International Demonstration and Education System, which eventually became the Internet Demonstration and Evaluation System, and that it could be installed locally. It contained model company data for training and demonstration purposes. And related to this, some of you may also be aware that SAP has recently announced a new version of the shared demo s hana system that is hosted by SAP and shared across one, more than one customer. I've put the link to this news item below and highly recommend this trip down memory lane. The next item from the SAP News Center is that the City of London Corporation has chosen Rise with SAP to transform its on-prem ERP. Specifically, the product base will include S4HANA Public Cloud, SAP BTP, SAP Analytics Cloud, Success Factors, and Concur. The article does not tell us what migration approach has been chosen. The link is down below. An IBM blog post on how IBM's Rapid Move solution can help migrate your ERP system to S4HANA using a hybrid, also known as Bluefield, approach. Rapid Move is a part of IBM Consulting's Rise with SAP adoption package called Breakthrough. Breakthrough. The tool boasts rapid data migrations in as little as a couple of days, reducing BAU disruption. I've put a link down below. Next, an article from heiser.de on SAP's 2 billion euro investment into sovereign cloud inside Germany. In the article, SAP is investing 2 billion euros over 10 years in sovereign cloud infrastructure. The money being split between Delos Cloud, which is a consortium consisting of SAP and Arvato, and a similar solo offering by SAP themselves with similar characteristics. The sovereign cloud debate has been raging for a good many years now, but recent tussles between Europe and the US over security of data and over reliance on US cloud companies such as Amazon and Microsoft have only put more emphasis on a European cloud solution. The link is in the description down below. Finally, orchestration provider Comunda announces its entrance into orchestration of SAP workflows across people, systems and devices. To provide assurance, Comunda has hired SAP development mentor Volker Busek as part of the development team. The article states, with Comunda's process orchestration solution, organizations will be able to take advantage of an open, composable architecture to integrate both SAP and non-SAP systems. My favorite item this week is SAP's 2 billion euro investment into Sovereign Cloud. This item has caught my interest for a number of reasons, and the first being that in 2022, UK Cloud, one of the UK's only sovereign public cloud providers, went into liquidation. Number two, in 2023, following an earlier market study by the UK's Office of Communication, Ofcom, the Competition and Markets Authority, CMA, launched an investigation into certain practices used by cloud service providers when operating in the UK. This included Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, and I think maybe IBM as well. I didn't really want to read all of the documentation as too much. The European Union Cloud Services Scheme, EUCS, is a voluntary certification scheme being developed by the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity, ENISA, with the aim to harmonize cybersecurity standards across the European Union. In original drafts, the EUCS had a requirement for digital sovereignty, whereby cloud services and their accompanying data must be located within the EU. However, this requirement was subsequently dropped and confirmed as no longer a requirement in September this year. What is sovereign cloud? The term sovereignty is often polluted on purpose or used in incorrect ways, but the whole premise of sovereign cloud is that both the data and the process that the data can go through remain within the confines of nationally incorporated companies. As an example, if you are a UK citizen working in the UK and you consume Microsoft Office 365, you may save an edited data file onto your laptop hard drive, but the operations on that file can be provided by services out of the US. This means the data, either in whole or in part, may have traveled into the jurisdiction of US incorporated companies and therefore out of the sole jurisdiction of the UK. So why is this a problem? There are legal requirements in countries outside of the UK where governments can mandate access to data from incorporated companies. This means, for example, the US government could potentially force a US company to hand over any data that actually belongs to a UK citizen or company. And this could go in direct contradiction of data security requirements in places like the UK. 
to prevent this. A sovereign cloud solution would ensure that data and any processes on the data never leave the UK. This not only extends to the digital aspects, but to the physical aspects, such as the humans in the administration of such systems. In relation to our example, this means preventing US employees from administering UK sovereign systems. A pure sovereign cloud provider has to be able to guarantee data, process, and administrative isolation. It also has to be owned by a separate top-level legal entity that is incorporated in the UK, i.e. it has no parent company from a jurisdiction outside of the UK. If we look at the way that cloud service providers like Microsoft, AWS, and Google traditionally operate, we start to understand that none of these companies can provide a sovereign cloud service in the UK. It would need to be performed by a separate company. Not only that, but this company would need to use systems that are controlled and operated in the UK. In a funny way, this kind of goes against one of the benefits of cloud computing because it restricts the scalability and elasticity to within the confines of a potentially much smaller infrastructure offering. How is all this related to SAP? Well, back in 2022, SAP formed a consortium with Arvato, a long-standing German-owned services company. That consortium created Delos Cloud, with the idea that it would be Germany's answer to sovereign cloud. The news article from heiser.de tells us that Delos Cloud will utilize Microsoft technology, or at least a version of that technology, that will be installed solely for use by Delos Cloud. The Delos Cloud will provide infrastructure as a service, IAS, similar to Microsoft Azure. Also included in the article is the news that SAP will also own and run a separate sovereign cloud with the purpose of hosting SAP systems, I assume, and services such as BTP. Now, I've probably not done the sovereign cloud debate much justice here. It is a very nuanced subject because of the data regulations that are referenced and the fact that some of the issues are legal issues that may actually never occur. So if you have any clarifications, drop me a comment down below. As always, reference links are in the description, drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.